we're going to be talking about the basics of venture capital and private equity. Um, so I've called it Venture Capital and Private Equity um, 101. Um, just a bit about me, I'm a medical physician, um, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm also an investor. So I studied medicine and surgery and then went on to start um, a medical air ambulance service um, doing medical flights um, across Western Central Africa. And then about 2014, um, we, um, so myself and some of my partners um, began formulating our first investment vehicle that was um, sort of focused on uh, the financial technology industry, so fintechs, um, and um, giving them early stage financing. Um, so in terms of my educational history, um, I started off at the whole York Medical School studying medicine. Um, and then went on um, to um, start my master's at um, the University of London. So my undergraduate degree was in medicine and surgery, and then I went on to study um, finance and economics at the University of London. Um, in addition to that, there's a few sort of deep dives I've done in different universities um, in terms of executive education. Um, but um, the New York Institute of Finance, I hold a, their professional certificate. Um, in infrastructure and PPP financing at Harvard University also, um, PPP financing again, um, and project finance. Um, and then I've done some stuff at, at Wharton at the IE Business School at Cambridge and um, at Michigan in accounting as well. Um, so that's just a bit about sort of the um, context that I'll be speaking from. Um, so where I used to work, um, like I said, I actually started off in the NHS, so I worked um, for the NHS um, as a doctor for a year um, or a bit over maybe two years um, and then I started my air ambulance company before um, then going on um, to work with Green Tree Investment Company which is an early stage um, vehicle investment vehicle sector agnostic but focused on financial technology um, and then I went on to start investing um, in a more focused strategy on healthcare um, even though I'm still on the board of um, Green Tree as well. So I've done both private equity transactions and um, venture capital transactions. So I'll speak about both and um, talk about the transactions. They're all in the public domain. I'll also be talking about some famous transactions in Nigeria as well that have taken place in the private equity and venture capital space. So what is uh, private equity? Private equity is an alternative form of financing, sort of away from the public markets. Um, in which um, funds and investors invest directly into companies or even engage in the buyout um, of these companies. And traditionally, private equity investments are made into mature businesses, um, so quite big size of businesses in very traditional industries where the technology is more or less known. And um, private equity firms make money in two ways, um, by charging the people that invested in them um, a management fee, and also by um, the agreed carried interest, which I'll be talking about later. So some private equity terms you might hear, LBO, MBO, MBI, BIMBO, um, and LBO is a leveraged buyout, um, MBO is a management buyout, um, an MBI is a management buy-in, and a BIMBO is a combination of the management buyout and um, buy-in. So um, if you want any further explanations of those terms, I, I can give, uh, give them to you, but I think they're all um, pretty self-explanatory. Um, leverage in the case of the um, LBO just means using debts um, to buy out a company. Nigerian companies that have received private equity company, like um, private equity um, investment, like I said, they're usually quite traditional companies um, that have grown to a certain size. Um, so Waka now from the travel industry um, received private equity financing from um, both ACA, which is a Nigerian um, private equity firm, um, and also an international firm called Carlisle. Emzo Pharmaceuticals um, received private equity financing from Verod Capital. Um, GCF Shaw also, when before it was AXA, um, received venture capital financing. Um, Computer Warehouse Group. Um, were famously um, received uh, venture capital financing as well. MTN is another uh, company that received money from the Africa Capital Alliance um, Venture Capital Fund. Um, Diamond Bank, 
that was a bit of a sad story in terms of um, the financials of that. But um, Diamond Bank received venture capital money as well. Um, and Health Plus, even though um, it's the, the transaction is still ongoing, um, that's an example um, of um, a healthcare company um, retail that um, has received um, and private equity financing as well. So um, what's venture capital? So venture capital is sort of like a form of private equity. Some people say it's completely different. I would say it's a, it's a, it's a form of private equity financing. Um, but the companies aren't mature. Um, they're very early stage companies. Um, and um, it's usually focused on technology or high growth potential companies that show a lot of potential to really grow and, and, and expand. Um, and it's a lot riskier than private equity. Like usually when you're doing private equity investor, investment, these are sort of known brands um, where you have you know, years of financials, you have a really mature management team. It's in an industry that's very well known and understood. Um, whereas venture capital, um, is, you know, very limited um, operational history. Um, and, you know, um, the technology is not always known, the market size isn't always sure, um, and um, the management teams are also pretty, you know, um, not as mature as you'd find in a traditional private equity investment. Um, but it's a massive industry, um, especially in the United States. So companies like Google, Yahoo, YouTube, Zappos, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, Oracle, Airbnb, all received uh, venture capital. Uh, and obviously con um, country, uh, companies in Nigeria like um, Flutterwave and Paystack um, and um, Andela, for instance, um, and all of the sort of big um, startup technology companies um, that we know of. Um, receives venture capital um, at some stage. Um, and the whole idea of uh, venture capital is to get this massive return, this massive um, up uptick in your investment um, because of the idea that eventually the cost of providing the service in a technology firm should fall to zero or close to zero. And at that point, um, you can experience exponential growth without having to add cost. Um, a bit of history. I like looking at the history of things. Um, yeah, it's a bit geeky, um, but I always like to see where things came from. Um, and the history of private equity can really be traced back to a few hundred years ago um, when JP Morgan, um, the man, not the institution, um, purchased Carnegie Steel. So he was a banker um, and he bought a steel company. Um, and um, for, at the time, a huge amount of money, half a billion, half a billion dollars. Um, the origins of sort of organized private equity, I guess, um, really trace back to about 1946, the first venture capital firms kind of in a rudimentary um, sort of setting um, emerged then. Um, and as the years have gone by into the 2000s, um, and even you know the 80s and 90s, venture capital um, and private equity um, have evolved into you know known and well understood um, asset classes. Venture capital and private equity are still um, not particularly not as established, I would say, in Nigeria um, as they are in um, markets like the European markets and the American market. But in the American markets, um, they're a very, very firm institution um, and companies, private equity companies like KKR, for instance, like Carlyle, like TPG, the biggest private equities in the world um, have uh, billions to trillions under management. Um, so there's a lot of terms that are really familiar to people in the um, PVC space, um, but perhaps not familiar to people that haven't done these transactions before. Um, so I'll just run through a few of them. So in the rest of my presentation, I can just use them and I don't have to keep on explaining. Um, the one of the things I like to look at is, uh, one of the things that venture, capitals, um, venture capital people like to say is, okay, who else is on the cap table, right? Um, and especially in Nigeria, you wanna see certain names on the cap table because there's some people that you feel like 
if they're on the cap table, I want to be on the same cap table as this person. Um, and sometimes when we go for um, sort of social events, um, you know, I, I'll say, you know, and this is this is this person, and we're on the same cap table. You know, it's a kind of a bit of information that okay, we're both on the same cap table for this company. And the cap table is an official document that shows the capital structure of the company, including the specific ownership level by each investors. Um, and it's generally used to view the percentage ownership that each investor or employee earns um, of a certain company. Um, and then there's something called the capital call. So when private equity companies put a press release out that they've raised a hundred million dollars or something like that, um, you know, their lives get a lot harder because people assume, even the plumbers <laughs> assume that because the story of raising a hundred million dollars um, is in the punch um, and is in business day that they have that in their accounts. Um, that's not really the case. So a capital call is when these people that have raised um, the general partners are ready to make an investment, then they'll ask the limited partners um, for the capital that they've committed to the fund. So the money just, when somebody raises $100 billion, it's not as if it's credited to their accounts immediately. Normally, um, there's, a, there's a capital call when they've identified and diligenced um, an investment and they call for the capital. Um, and there was a case, um, thankfully, um, the general partner wasn't Nigerian, but there was a huge case because it was an African investment company, but not owned by an African where um, he was calling capital, but not investing in what he had promised to invest in. And that, that, that became a big scandal. So um, capital calling is what you do when you've identified an investment and the money has to be spent on what you said it was going to be spent on. Um, carried interest is the share of the capital gains from a fund. So um, when you exit an investment or liquidate an investment, what's the, what comes to the um, general partner or the person managing the private equity funds is called their carry. Um, and that carry is usually about 20%. So we call it an 80-20 fund. And some people say that private equity is just about working for the investors. Because even when we get this huge liquidity event, right, we only get 20% of the profit. And 80% goes back to the investors that haven't really done the, the amount of work that we've put into those companies. Um, so some people can negotiate better carries, but it's usually an 80-20 carry. Um, and then convertible debts. Um, when some people don't invest straight equity, um, they use convertible notes, um, they use safe notes. So um, convertible debts or convertible debt notes is debt that can be converted to equity when certain conditions are made. Like when they reach a special specific valuation or at a specific date or specific milestones. Um, so that's what convertible debt is. Due diligence, we're going to be speaking quite a lot about due diligence in this presentation. And that's, that's the kind of detective work that you do vetting and analyzing of the individuals, companies and investors before engaging in a transaction. Early stage, um, this is the venture capital type of um, investment where we invest in um, the early stage, maybe pre-seed or seed um, stages when companies have very little revenue and you know, just about a proven concept. So just about bottom to product market fit. An exit is where an investor sells their equity in a portfolio company, and that can come in many ways, and I'll be talking about that later. The GP is somebody like me that raises capital from limited partners. So in 2014-15, um, we put some money into the fund, and then we went about Lagos, because um, this was a local round, raising money from our limited partners um, for the fund. Um, so myself, um, Mr. Bode Augusto Abbas um, and Mr. Dave went about and um, we, as GPs, um, raised from LPs um, to put together the Green Tree Investment Funds, which was the first funding vehicle that I was um, part of. An initial public offering is the first time a company's private stock goes public. And a lot of PEs and VCs in America actually exit onto the private market, um, or exit onto the public markets. That's how they get out of the investment. In Nigeria, that's less common. 
Um, and if you want to go into the reasons why that's less common, we can we 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 can dig into that a bit. Um, but it's mainly because of the liquidity available um, on the Nigerian stock exchange. So if you remember, even Jumia, for instance who had a lot of investors, they, they didn't choose to exit onto the Nigerian Stock Exchange. They actually listed um, on the New York Stock Exchange. And um, we can talk about dual listing, foreign listing, um, and um, what people want to see um, in, in, in a stock exchange exit. And then in terms of the IRR, um, this is the rate at which the net present value of all the cash flows from an investment will equal zero. So the IRR actually is um, a term used to gauge fund performance. What was the internal rate for return of the fund? So those are a few terms that I'll be using sparingly um, across um, the um, um, ac across the course of this presentation. Um, I don't think there's any other definitions that we particularly need for now. GPLP, I've explained, the management fee is usually 0.5 to 3% of the capital amount um, used to manage the private equity or venture capital office. Um, the share purchase agreement is a contract for the deal. Um, and the safe note is sort of like a promise or an option um, that could, you can use to buy shares in a future price ground. So um, a lot of the um, startups here in Nigeria of, um, offer safe notes or convertible notes as well as um, the option of equity. So the differences, I've already said some of the differences um, between private equity and uh, venture capital, but um, just to go through the major differences again, a private equity fund will usually take a majority stake. So you'll see them taking 90% of the business, You'll see them with agreements where they buy 70% of the business. And then, you know, if you don't meet certain milestones and they'll take 90%, that's called an earn out. Um, whereas venture capital typically um, would acquire a minority stake in the business. So even the biggest venture capital company, um, almost, um, or the most popular and probably most well-known Y Combinator, for example, um, they take about, I think it's 12% of each company that they invest in. So not very much at all. Um, it might even be less than 12%. And um, they only invest $100,000. Whereas private equity firms, I mean, some private equity firms like uh, KKR and Carlyle would really, really find it difficult um, to do anything less than $500 million. So they'd find it difficult to invest anything less than half a billion dollars. Whereas venture capital, we're talking about very much smaller amounts of money, right? The time of investment is usually early stage in venture capital, more mature companies in private equity. The type of business is traditional in private equity, but more tech enabled in venture capital. Um, I've spoken about the different ticket sizes, 100 million to 500 billion normally, but the big boys um, find it, you know, they want to invest one or two billion into a company. Um, in um, venture, uh, in private equity, you're looking at a five year exit. Um, and in uh, venture capital, um, sometimes people exit a bit quicker. And then valuation. Oh, what a tricky issue. Um, in private equity, the valuation is pretty set in stone, right? Um, they're going to look at your EBITDA and times it by four or six or whatever is acceptable in the industry. Or it's a fixed figure. Whereas um, in venture capital, the... Valuation is more or less uh, as the Lord leads. Um, valuation in venture capital is much more tricky. Um, sometimes it doesn't have um, so much to do with how much profit they're making, because sometimes a company isn't profitable at the time. Um, it, it has less of a relationship with cash flows, more of a relationship with the type of technology and the market size. As a venture, um, as a private equity company, um, a private equity company would normally control your company. So they'll normally take a controlling stake. That means that you don't control your company anymore. Um, and obviously that causes all sorts of drama in the markets um, because um, these are the private equity companies that can actually like sack the CEO, sack the founder of the company. And that's happened quite a few times um, to significant Nigerian companies, right? Um, and I think that one of the most interesting things about entrepreneurship is you know um, the idea that it brings freedom and 
And once you're an entrepreneur, you have control of your own time and your own destiny and, you know, you're your own boss. That doesn't really work. You never get rid of your bosses. I think that I can remember when I, I did work, my longest job was actually at Timberland. I was selling shoes. It was a retail stop in um, retail sh- store in the UK. And uh, when I was in paid employment, I had one boss. And as long as I could do what that boss wanted me to do, I was OK. In entrepreneurship, you have a lot of bosses um, in all sorts of places. And sometimes you don't even know that those people are your bosses until you find out that they're your bosses. Um, And definitely a lot of the times, um, companies that have received uh, private equity feel like, you know, the private equity firm is definitely the boss. Um, They hold a majority stake and you've grown your business for years. You know, these are 20 year old, 30 year old businesses, they were babies. And suddenly somebody has bought 70% and has a park sack key um, and tell you what to do and tell you how the business is going to expand. Um, So, you know, uh, private equity has control, whereas a venture capital normally has a minority stake, so less control. So how are venture capital structures, um, companies structured? Um, The LPGP structure, the LPs are the people that bring the money, the GP is the person that manages the money, and then you can have multiple funds under the same GP. So right now I'm a GP in a sector agnostic fund um, called um, Greenfield Investment Fund, but I am also, um, I have a healthcare specific fund uh, called the Flying Doctors Investment Company. So I'm a GP um, in two funds, so I manage two funds in parallel. Um, And in terms of the venture capital uh, funding process, people submit um, their decks to the venture capital firm. Um, There's usually a lot of meetings and then um, there's due diligence. Um, and due diligence consists of, you know, checking all the documents with CAC, making sure that, um, you know, nobody's lying too much about anything. Um, doing investigations on the personality of the founder as well, um, because that's important, their lifestyle, what they're paying themselves, the size of the market, um, and trying to find any cockroaches. Um, because one of the things that at least we've noticed is if you see one cockroach, like in the house, there's probably more cockroaches. So all you're looking for, and sometimes you don't even need to see the whole cockroach, you can just see the wings or some part of it, and then you know that perhaps that cockroach is there and you need to look a bit further. So due diligence usually takes some time um, to complete um, because you're searching for things that might inform your decision whether or not to invest. Um, After that, there's a term sheet that's produced, um, which spells out what agreement um, works for um, or what offer is being made um, to buy the company. And then the VC then releases um, funds to the startup. It's quite common for private equity funds to release in tranches, um, whereas um, less common for VCs to release in tranches, although sometimes um, VCs also release in tranches. Portfolio management. So this is the work, day-to-day work. Um, Some people, um, private equity firms and venture capital firms actually have what's called an operating partner. Um, And the um, operating partner actually does the heavy lifting of the portfolio management. So making sure that, um, you know, investments are um, properly diversified, um, making sure that you're speaking to the um, portfolio companies um, regularly, making sure that they're still in the country and have you used your money to travel, um, you know, making sure that all of the needs of the companies are met in terms of introductions that you can make from there for them to customers, uh, making sure that any regulatory problems you're having, like, um, for example, um, GoCabber um, is part of um, one of um, uh, GoCabber, the transportation um, is owned by um, a venture capital PE firm, um, so, or partly owned at least. So when they had the Okada ban, for instance, the investors were involved in trying to sort out the regulatory problems and try and transition them to perhaps a new business model. Um, and then the risk tolerance as well, just understanding what risks lie in different companies and how you can manage that risk. And obviously planning for exits, trying to figure out, you know, who are the potential strategic 
um, acquirers, who are the next sort of round investors, etc. And finally, we're going to talk about exits. So that's when you exit the investment by selling the stock of the portfolio company. And this is what everybody is waiting for, right? Um, you know, it made the news on Twitter and social media when we're able to exit um, um, Paystack. And Paystack was a strategic acquisition um, by Stripe. And we were able to exit our investment and that produced um, a liquidity event for us. Um, the private equity world loved when um, there was a um, liquidity event from MTN, for example. Um, and that's when, you know, these big companies, when you've made a bet on a good company um, and um, you get to exit. So how do you exit? Sometimes um, the company is acquired. So in the case of Diamond Bank, as you know, um, Access Bank, the great acquirers of everything, um, acquired Diamond Bank um, through an M&A transaction. Um, sometimes it's through secondary. So let's say I invested in a company in Series A, and at Series B, um, investors are coming in on a high valuation. I can exit through the secondary market and say either at that time um, when they're raising their extra round, I can say, you know what, I've had enough. I'm going to, I'm going to exit. Um, or alternatively, I can sell my share to somebody else. Um, and people know that I hold. So when we're holding particular shares, um, we're still holding particular shares. Um, people actually just contact us informally and are like, you know what, I really like this company and I want to buy at this valuation. And then we can work it out with the company and, um, you know, they just buy on the secondary market. Um, there's also this idea of um, this um, exit via strategic acquisition. Happens quite a lot um, in America where, um, you know, uh, recently, can I think of any recent interesting acquisitions? I mean, even looking at say Instagram, for instance, that was acquired by um, Facebook, that's a, a strategic acquisition, right? Um, they're in the social media business. They want to own all the social media assets. They'll clone you if you don't sell your company anyway, um, like they did with Snapchat. So um, strategic acquisitions happen when, you know, there's a company in one business who wants to own the entire portfolio of companies in that particular business. And then, like I said, um, you know, there's always the IPO route. So um, just before COVID, a few months before COVID, Zoom IPO'd and a lot of people sold their shares. I'm sure they regretted it afterwards because, you know, Zoom had a huge upside um, during the pandemic. Um, companies like Air, um, Airbnb, um, for example, um, they were that was a wire combinator company. So when it IPO'd, that was a liquidity event for its investors. Um, I've spoken about how venture capitalists make money. So I've just repeated this slide again through their management fees and through uh, carried exits, um, sorry, carried interest. Um, pitfalls, due diligence is important, um, optimism, excessive optimism on things and not, you know, considering them carefully, um, you know, bad portfolio management, um, don't just take a seat on the board, try and understand the industry, um, try and, you know, strategically position um, in terms of hiring, um, and also, you know, in, especially in Africa, um, you find yourself not just being an investor, but almost like a non-executive founder, right? Um, so a lot of protection from some of the regulatory pitfalls as well, um, having to pick up the phone and try and sort things out with people. Um, I call them like defending them from the evil forces. Um, some of the strange things that happen in Nigerian business um, that, you know, are very, very difficult to circumvent without... Um, source of a certain amount of social capital so um, there's a pitfalls to avoid. Um, so I think we've been on quite a journey here. We've um, spoken about the difference between P and VC. Um, we've spoken about some of the features. We've looked at the history. Um, we've looked at examples of you know famous P and VC transactions um, in the Nigerian environment um, and then gone on to some, shared some of my experiences from companies that I've invested in over um, the past few years and sort of how it works at a board level in terms of um, portfolio management. Um, so any, any questions? Thank you. Thank you.